There's a group of the Maasai living through the Kuku Group Ranch around, uh, that's around 17,000 people. That's like the Maasai people only, 17,000. And um, the ranch now, it lies like, uh, it's very big, 283,000 acres. <laughs> that is based on the Chulu Hills uh, between Tsavo and Amboseli National Parks. That's something you could not know about the Maasai. Now you know. As we proceed, um, there are so many things that the Maasai culture or the Maasai people are well known for. They are well known for their distinctive culture, their rituals, their high jumping. Like a Maasai can jump, like really, really jump. Uh, their dance, their custom dress, and of being courageous warriors. The Maasai people are one of the most courageous people that I know. Uh -huh. Being a uh, Maasai myself, by the way, yes. And they have unique names. Like, if you've ever noticed, the Maasai people, their names start with, okay, for the ladies, the names start with Na, Naseku, Nashilu, Naisiai, Nashibai, Nairesiai, Naseriyan. And then for the for the, for the boys, uh, we have Olomayana, we have uh, Leshan, Lemayan, so many names. And um, for them, for the Maasai people, those people are very rich. But they one of the richest communities that I know in Kenya or in Africa, the Maasai. And they value their cows so much. So if you're a Maasai and you're a boy and you don't have a cow, my friend, you don't have wealth, you're not wealthy. They value so much cows. And um, like right now, recent statistics have shown that there are over one million of them. And uh, having eight, 841,622 of them in Kenya, and then we have 430,000 in Tanzania. And in 1989, uh, in both countries, uh, there were 377,089. Imagine that. That's, like, that's a large number. And then there came the Zulu and they drove like the Maasai people out of their lands. That's so unfair. I believe that's so unfair. So uh, they inhabit more than one country, as I've told you uh, before. That's Kenya and Tanzania. They are, I think they are well known for being in Kenya and Tanzania. So it is made up of 16 sections, or in Kimasa you can say in So there are 16 Eloshons within the Maasai society. So the first one, we have the like, Ildamat, we have the Ilpurko, Ilkenkonyoke, we have Iloitai, we have Ilkabutie, we have Il... Hey! <laughs> there are so many. We have Isiria, we have Ilmotiani, Ilodogilani, we have Ilasura, we have Kore, we have Parapuyu, we have Ilosongo or Isirikai. So hey, there are so many, there are so many, there are endless, like there are 16. Uh, just to mention but a few. And then like um, the third one, uh, the third thing that the Maasai community are well known for is taking blood as part of their diet. So, I know this one may sound strange to you. Do you know like the Maasai people, they slaughter like a cow or a goat or a sheep. And then that blood, they let it clot and then they cut it as a piece of cake. Then they take it, so they consume it. And uh, they consume it um, when they are sick, 
they believe that blood can cure them faster than any other any other medicine. So they take it when they are sick, when they have just been circumcised. So when a boy is or, or when a girl is circumcised, because back in the days the Maasai used, used to circumcise ladies. So after the circumcision, immediately you're giving the blood to consume. And then after a lady has just given birth, boom, you're given blood. So um, they say that it has like nutrients or something and proteins and it cures fast and it boosts your immunity faster. So even the Ilamurak, that's the elders, uh, they also drink blood to prevent or alleviate hangovers after drinking. Well, like, no, I forget Shere, I will go, well, okay, not like Shere back in the days, but then they take blood to like help reduce the hangovers or something. And then it is great like, for the immune system. So blood, masses and blood are like this. So this is how they do it. Uh, after they have consumed the blood, or they mix the blood with the milk, and then they, they drink it, or they mix the blood and the kidney or the liver. Then they consume it like raw, raw. That, hey, that's so amazing. Big up for the Maasai people. And then um, the fourth thing is that they are named after their own language. Like Maasai literally means the one who speaks my language. And the language itself is part of the East Neolithic branch of the Nilo Saharan language family. I know you did not know that, so now you know. So um, the, the word Maasai comes from. Ma, like you speak Ma, you are Ma speaker, so yes. And then the fifth one is that um, they have their own traditional wardrobe, like the Maasai Shuka, you understand? And they dress in red sheets, that's the, the one that I've seen with the Maasai Shuka. So they wrap it around their body with multiple pieces of jewelry. Depending on the occasion, they wear different colors. <clears throat> and before, they used to dress in animal skin and this is why they value cows so that's how their wardrobe uh, that's how unique their wardrobe is and then they have stretched yellow piercings and then it's stretched like up to the neck they have they have these earrings it's very unique like very very unique and then mostly that was their pride when singing and doing like this they are hair and then they the ear used to go like this so it was it used to bring the rhythm of the song like yes you understand it's very fun you guys should visit the Maasai land it's it's amazing like it's very amazing and then the Maasai members adorn the enlarged fistula with rows of beads as well as single earring to wait in house as a Maasai man what status is determined by how many cows you have or how many cows you own? No, what well status was determined by the number of cows you had. And um, not only do they get food, but also they get homes. That is uh, like the manyata. The walls and the roofs, they are made uh, from the cow dung. So you'll find that. And that thing is never smelly, but it's never smelly. So I'll show you the image of the manyata and how like they made, they built the manyata. So the walls, like the manyata, it's kind of in an oval shape or something. So the, the walls, they're made of the cow dung and then they leave a small hole. Then on top also the roof, it's made of the cow dung. So the cows, you see that they give the Maasai so many things, like they, they benefit a lot from the cows. And um, the seventh thing about the Maasai community, they have different religions within their tribe. Traditionally, they have always been monotheistic, believing in one god, that is Enkai. Enkai is that. that's good god. Uh, they slightly have different names. So we have Enkai Nano, that's a black god. He is benevolent, like, he's a black god. Like, Enkai Nano. Okay, I'm not saying the Nano culture or the Nano culture, but like, <laughs> He's a, he's a black girl, like maybe something or if anything bad happens, you say that Enkaina Rock has, like I'm a strike, like God is angry, so I'm a little doom into the community. And anytime I'm a say warrior dies after something that has happened, they repent or they perform a ritual because they say that Enkaina Rock has straight again and then uh, we have Enkai Naniki that is God a uh, red God he is vengeful so another thing about the Maasai people they are very polygamous 
of very polygamous like they are so polygamous i think actually in africa uh, or in kenya like they say that one of the communities in africa that are very polygamous are the Maasai. because the one thing that i'm very sure was that they are very proud of their community that's why you find that um they have a symbol so anytime you see a Maasai person so um when a woman gets married she's marrying um her husband's entire group and uh, a wife is often younger than the husband that's why you find that uh, in the Maasai community like there are so many women who are widows and they are not expected like to remarry after so the ninth thing about the Maasai community is uh, children are not named until three months of age like until they are past three months of age and uh, there is an official naming ceremony known as Enkepukunuto uh, it's no okay in English it's um, coming out of the seclusion paper before the mother and the children the naming ceremony the mother and the child they are separated so to allow like their hair to grow longer and then after the ceremony now the hair is like they shave off the hair uh, at the ceremony or maybe after to like symbolize a new beginning so last but not least about the Maasai community they have their own calendar and uh, by saying that they have their own calendar uh, they don't have a particular term they are 12 months like they are 12 months in, in each month uh, they are 30 days strictly 30 days and then uh, there is 15 days of darkness and there is 15 days of brightness and during the 8th day that's the changing day and there are 3 main seasons uh, for them so the, the long rains, the drizzles and the short rains last but not least I'd like to say a show link for watching a spotlight show policy